This is Resident Evil 3 Nemesis for the Nintendo GameCube. Alright my friends, welcome to another Resident Evil game. I'm going to be starting a new game on easy mode because it's fun. Resident Evil. Let's go. It all began as an ordinary day in September. An ordinary day in Raccoon City. A city controlled by Umbrella. No one dared to oppose them, and that lack of strength would ultimately lead to their destruction. I suppose they had to suffer the consequences of their actions, but there would be no forgiveness. If only they had had the courage to fight! It's true that once the wheels of justice begin to turn, nothing can stop them. Nothing. It was Raccoon City's last chance, and my last chance. My last escape. This is Chopper Delta, preparing to drop off at area E95070. Farewell to my life, farewell to my home. This is my last chance for survival. This is my last escape. Okay. In Raccoon City. Here we are. Playing as Jill Valentine and we're pretty much thrown into the deep end immediately as you can see. There are zombies everywhere. The RPD didn't stand a chance against that horde. So we're not in a very good position at the moment. As soon as you come down here, you are surrounded by zombies again. They're down every single alleyway within Raccoon City, and we need to kind of get the heck out of here, so what better way to do that than to smash down a door that is conveniently behind us. And I never noticed this before, but if you look at the window, zombie arms try to grab at her as well. She is literally surrounded. Not a good place to be for her. September 28th, daylight. The monsters have overtaken the city. Somehow, I'm still alive. Okay, we've got to get out of here. What? What do you think you're talking about? I just lost my daughter out there! How dare you tell me to go back outside? I'm sorry about your daughter, but there isn't gonna be any rescue. We have to get out of here! No! I'm not going anywhere! I'd rather starve to death in here than be eaten by one of those undead monsters! Now leave me alone! Uh, he'll be starving for a long time then. Have you seen the size of that guy? Like a zombie food buffet. Right, well, he's not joining us on our quest. <laughs> I guess we're moseying on without him then.
Now there's a few items in this warehouse that we can go ahead and pick up. There is actually a can of first aid spray down there. I'm not sure whether I'll pick it up or not, um, but I actually want to come around here and grab a key out of this save room. That's right, this is a save room. Pretty much immediately at the start of this game. Alright, there's that classic save room music. And this is the warehouse key. Gets us the heck out of this place. Now we get introduced to these. These are gunpowders. This is a red one, so this is gunpowder A. You also have gunpowder B and gunpowder C. You make C by mixing a red and yellow together, and you can also combine them uh, with each other. Like for example, you can mix A with A, you can mix A and B, you can mix A and C, etc, etc. Um, there's a lot of combinations that you can make, because we actually have a kit on us in this uh, box, as well as a ton of ammunition as you can see, because this is, the, uh, this is actually the easy difficulty, so we are well kitted up for any situation that may occur. But um, there is actually a gunpowder making, well, you know, sort of using kit in our box as well. Use the gunpowders with that, and you can make yourself more ammunition. It's kind of cool. So for example, if I was to mix an A and a B into a C, and then I did that another two more times and mixed the C's so that I had a triple C. And I actually made myself, um, you know, use that with the, uh, the gun making kit. That would actually get me a ton of magnum ammo. And you can make freeze rounds, flame rounds, normal grenade rounds, shotgun ammunition, handgun ammunition. There is a lot of different bullets that you can make yourself uh, for different guns throughout this game. So it's kind of cool. It's a good way of um, stocking up on ammo in case you run out later on. And that's an important aspect because obviously we come across Nemesis quite a few times throughout this game. And he doesn't go down without a fight, obviously. And that's if you choose to, uh, to fight him. Now, as I'm not playing this on the hard mode, he's unfortunately not going to drop anything when I kill him. So for that reason, I'm probably not going to bother. Instead, I'm just going to blitz through all these uh, zombies with this machine gun that I uh, really love. <laughs> it's locked from the other side. I'm not going that way. Let's try this way then. And I have to say that Nemesis is one of the most creepiest sons of bitches out there in the Resident Evil universe. He is just... I don't know, he is always making your game that much more intense. Where the heck does that guy think he's going? Let's just take care of these ones first. I need to go down there, unfortunately. <laughs> and as you can see, there's quite a lot of zombies in there. Are they going to come out? No? Alright. Guess I'm going in then. They're just not doing anything, are they? They're just going to stand there and just take it. Okay, that's fine. I love this gun. <laughs> this gun loves me. Oh, okay. You're down here as well, Elliot. I might actually have to turn on the, uh, the auto-aim feature at some point. Um, I don't quite know exactly where it is. Uh, button config. Perhaps I'll check that out later on. Um, but I actually, yeah, I'd like to change that over to auto-aim because I'm pretty sure this game has got that feature. And why not go ahead and pick up another shotgun, <laughs> just for the sake of it. That's why I never picked up the uh, the shotgun out of the box, because I knew that I was picking up one here. So I've got the ammunition and I've got a shotgun. And the shotgun is probably going to be my most used weapon throughout the game. I may end up using, uh, you know, the Magnum later on, because we actually do come across and we can make a lot of ammo for that. Um, so I'm not too worried about ammo where you know, guns and firing and all that kind of stuff is concerned. But I'm not going to be really fighting Nemesis, so I don't have to worry too much about losing out on that. They are literally everywhere. Can't go down here, I'm taking it. Nope, it's locked from the other side. Okay, I'll have to go the other way around then. Whoa, no you don't. <laughs> I'm glad this gun is working for me, because in the cutscene, the RPD had no chance, and they were using pretty much the same weapon. Yeah, you're kind of screwed, aren't you? Right, excuse me. Thank you. And we'll go through here, then. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to be bumping into that uh, man in just a second. We'll find out a little bit more about his backstory. 
Right now, in fact, actually. Yep, because as you can see, he's still on the run. Where are you going, Brad? Alright. No, you're not going after him. <laughs> okay. I hunt you guys down. You don't hunt him down, I hunt you. Oh, now there's a little, um, it's not really a trick, it's something that you can do to save yourself some ammunition. Uh, but this guy's under attack now. Get away! Yeah, I'm not gonna bother, uh, helping him. <laughs> um, mainly due to the fact that you don't need to. Instead, I'm just going to go ahead and pick up some pictures, uh, some ammunition that's around here, just for the handgun. He can look after himself, trust me. He won't die. You see? You're safe. <laughs> and you didn't waste any ammo. Brad, hang in there. Why isn't someone doing something about this? I didn't know you were still alive, Jill. The police aren't trained for this kind of situation. What could they do? Listen, he's coming for us. We're both gonna die. What are you saying? You'll see. He's after STARS members. There's no escape. Okay, she says. <laughs> you can see it in her face, even though this is kind of like a, an older game, which I hope gets uh, a HD remake, that would be amazing. But you can kind of see that she's like, what the hell are you talking about? She has no idea what he's going on about. Because this is like the uh, the first major sort of casual threat that you encounter in a Resident Evil game. Um, normally it's just zombies, You then you, count, you, know, you encounter a couple of side bosses, stuff like that. But this guy hunts you down throughout the entire game. And that's just one aspect that makes it so much more intense. It's a ton more enjoyable in my opinion. Right, let's see. Uh, no, I need to go this way. That's right. Yeah, I don't like Nemesis. <laughs> he doesn't like me. We don't like each other. We don't get on. So, it's a good thing that I have that lighter and the lighter fluid because now we're going to be using it right here. Um, in the PS1 version, that cutscene happens after you do the uh, the lighter. It's a good thing that that barrel is there because I'm going to go ahead and shoot at that. <laughs> I'll just wait for these guys to get a bit closer, and boom, there we go. I think there are some herbs at the back there. I'm not entirely sure. Um, health can be a little bit sparse in this game. Thinking about it, what is that? That's just—is uh, that all it is? Red herbs. That's kind of lame. I'll take it. <laughs> In case I come across a green one later on. Now you'd think with the zombies on fire I could just, you know, pick one of the zombie bodies up and just throw it at the gate and then burn it. <laughs> nope, we have to use the lighter. So obviously where them zombies burst out of that door before, if you don't go down there and get the, uh, the oil for the lighter, you're kind of boned at this point. You won't have a, a functional lighter. Yep, doggies. Another dog is like, what, what, there's a human being there? Okay. <laughs> Got a lucky hit in on me, but um, no biggie. I don't necessarily have to worry about killing them things because they won't be there at some point. Uh, but as you can see there, there is actually a gunpowder A and B next to each other. So I'll just go ahead and take those. Ammo's always nice, right? Okay, right, and I'll just, I guess I'll put some stuff in the box for now. Don't really need the handgun ammo either, that's kind of taken up a bit of unnecessary room. The red herb can go in there for now as well, and I think we're probably golden. Yeah, we can leave now. Alright, so we're about to encounter Nemesis. He's just chilling by the police station. Spoiler alert. And... Yeah, something's about to go down, I won't say exactly what in case you haven't played this game before. Um, and if you haven't, I strongly advise that you do. But play the first Resident Evil 1 and 2. They're very good as well. I always find that you tend to have a preference out of 1, 2 or 3. Um, I really like number 3. I think that Nemesis definitely makes it interesting. 
But yeah, let's go ahead and enter the RPD area of this game now. And we're about to encounter, well, first of all, a cutscene. Well, that was gross. So, I've got a choice here. I can run away or fight. And I know I said I'm not going to fight Nemesis, but I am here. Because uh, Brad had something on him. And it makes our life a little bit easier. So, I'm just going to dodge Nemesis's massive arm. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and pick up the card case. No! Oh, put me down! Oh, not quite like that. Alright. Time to get up. Excuse me. <laughs> He's like, damn! And we got away. Now that card case has something pretty useful that we can actually use, but that's going to have to wait until the next episode, guys. We're not quite free of Nemesis yet. There are a few things that we can do in the next episode, guys. So I hope you're enjoying the playthrough, and I hope to see you in the next episode. Alright, guys, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Take care.